yesterday. Go for it. So for the recording, this is the information. Um, so is NJCU the right school for me? I know everyone's pretty acquainted with NJCU at this point because it's right around the corner, but this is just some quick info about us at a glance, right? So we're right in downtown Jersey City. We have a bunch of D Division Three school, uh, Division Three sports. If you want a breakdown of them, I can send them as we're going through the chat. Um, there's a fitness center on campus. There's a pool on campus. There's a library on campus. There's tutoring resources in the library. There are tons of different clubs and organizations to join. It's very easy to put one together if you wanted to do that. They focus on professional, um, professional interest, personal interest, academic interest. There's a theater on campus that's beautiful and it's said to be haunted if we have any ghost aficionados here. Um, we have a bunch of different buildings as well. Um, but what's really great, and I should say as well that we're Harbor Side, or we have a business, uh, business building that's Harbor Side as well. And the reason I'm going through all of this at a glance is because we have at NJCU, we have everything that you could be looking for. If you're looking for resources to help you get a job, we have a career services center. If you need help with tutoring, there's a dedicated writer, writing and a tutoring center. There's a bunch of different places to eat on campus. Um, if again, you were looking to get involved, tons of different clubs and activities. And you know that we're only a couple stops away on the path from uh, New York, which is super important for, for you as a human person who might want to make use of the city and go see shows or get an internship. Um, or if you ever wanted to do a master class and a workshop in the city, we're right there. So we, re we have a small campus feel, which is really nice, but we have the city, which is a world in and of itself, only a couple minutes away. So just to kind of look at campus overall, it's a really great place to be. Lots of great resources. You see that big, bright, beautiful Crayola, we call it the K building in the background. Um, so we've got a really great mix of old, I shouldn't say old, we're gonna say charming and vintage and new. Um, so we really have a great dynamic on campus. Virtual campus visits. So if you're in the application pipeline, you've probably gotten a million emails from me about these already. Um, I do tons of events all through the week. We do info sessions, we do individual appointments, we have transfer admitted students days, we have virtual campus tours, which are guided and led. Um, by an admission staff member. So if you want more info, if you just want to pop back in and see my awesome hair, if you have questions down the line, sign up for one of these things. There's, again, we're really very much here. If you need help with anything at any step, there's an event coming up. There are questions to be answered. We're there and we're happy to help. All of these things can be registered for online. It's a pretty easy form. I can put the email or the link up, pardon me, into the chat before we head out today. So if anyone wants to schedule anything, they can. Um, the transfer admitted students days I'm going to point out are also pretty helpful because we have different departments come in to talk more about like the enrollment process like you'll hear from advising tutoring you'll hear from the health and wellness center because we all have a brand new peaked interest in health and wellness this this year given the pandemic and everything happening so if you want to learn more there's a lot going on I'll put the um, I'll put the links for the virtual visits into the chat app. John, I'm sorry to interrupt. There's a question in the chat. If you want me to help you with the chat, it's if a, if I want to meet with a counselor at JCU, do I have to schedule an appointment for a transfer student? Yeah, you can just email me. If you want to schedule an appointment, I'll put my email in the chat too. Just send me a message and we can schedule something. Okay, cool. Um, so monies, this is important, right? So what we have on this screen is a breakdown of the price for NJC. Did someone say, did someone have a question? No? All right. Um, again, also thank you, Sabrina. If you have questions, keep throwing them in the chat. I'm happy, we're happy to pause and go to them. Um, but what we have on the screen now is the price, the uh, and fees for MJCU. So you can see right there is the sticker price for a year. So that would be, and if you hear crying in the background, that's my dog, I'm sorry. Um, but you can kind of see the sticker price for what a year at MJCU. Um, one of the things that I'm not just saying because I work at NJCU, I've worked at a couple of different schools, we have a lot of different transfer scholarships. Um, they're merit-based, so we assign them to you at the point that you're admitted. The way we determine them is we look at your GPA, we look at your credits, we look if you're anticipating getting your associate's degree, and then we project them based off of that. So from a 2.0 GPA all the way up to the four, we'll consider you for scholarships. Um, and they range. So we have a $1,000 scholarship. There's a $4,000 scholarship. There's a $6,000 scholarship. And again, they, the way that we determine them is based off of your GPA. 
if you wanted to follow up just to see what your scholarship might look like, I'll again, put my email in the chat. So just feel free to email me with your GPA. Let me know what your credits are looking like. And I can give you an idea of what your scholarship will most likely be. One of the things that's the nicest about these is you don't have to write an essay. You don't have like a separate application to file just for the, um, just for the uh, scholarships or anything like that. You just have to file your FAFSA. Um, one of the things is you do have to be a full-time. I'm pretty sure that's an EOF requirement too, that you have to be full-time. Sabrina, am I right? Um, not as a transfer student, we do have okay. the option for part-time. Okay. Um, so then for scholarship purposes, you would want to be full-time. So you would probably want to try and if it's difficult, you might want to try to find some like online classes. Um, they're also built for students who don't have a bachelor's degree already. So if you do have a bachelor's, unfortunately, you wouldn't be eligible for our admissions-based scholarship uh, scholarships. But base, and again, they're, they're pretty generous. Scholarships as well come up throughout the semester through different departments and stuff like that. And Lloyd will talk a little bit more about EOF funding in a little bit. Um, but it's, I, and again, I don't just say this because I work at NJCU. I've worked at a couple different schools. We have a lot of scholarship opportunities for transfers. Um, and you'll be, you'll be notified about them when you're admitted. So in your acceptance letter, you'll also get info on your scholarship in addition to the acceptance. And I see that popping up. Do we have any questions in there? Yes, John. Um, do you have to have an AS degree to be eligible for the scholarships? That's a good question. No, we have two scholarships that are designed for students who don't have their associates. Um, I'm sure most of most of the students here are in progress of getting their associates. Um, so and we, we we can adjust scholarship dollars as well. So let's say you are in progress of getting your associates now. Um, you get it at the end of the semester, but you boop, uh, like you boost from like a 3.5 GPA to a 3.7 GPA. We can readjust your scholarship at that we would just have to look over everything and change, uh, and we would be able to review it when we get the updated transcripts. That answers the second one as well, then. Oh, yeah, we're good. good. Two birds, one stone. Um, NJCU's response to COVID, again, the, the world is a different place now. Um, there's plenty of mass distribution on campus. You'll get emails about testing on campus as well. They do that very regularly. Um, there was a point when we were switching to remote learning where some of our students didn't have laptops and didn't have a secure um, Wi-Fi connection and the school was able to help them uh, help them work with that. We do have our food pantry open on campus as well. So if you ever needed to bring some food home or something like that, all of the resources are still in place. Even though we're working pretty remotely right now and we kind of have a bare bones staff on campus, we are very much there to service anything a student might need. So if you need a resource, if you need testing, if you need a laptop, if you need masks on campus, if food is a worry, we got your back. Again, the message of the day of the day is probably is when you walk away, it's going to be we got you. Okay, so the application process. This is probably a slide you want to take a screenshot of too. And I see a question popping up in the chat. Let me just take a look. Yes, if FAFSA is covering my whole tuition and I get a scholarship, how will that work? Will I get the scholarship money? That's a good question. So the way it works is your FAFSA factors in and your scholarship factors in. So what happens is your FAFSA dollars kind of take care of some of the tuition bill first. Whatever is remaining, like in the bill, that's where your scholarship kick in. And hypothetically, if there's anything remaining, then you would work with the um, you would work with the Bursar's office to set up a payment plan or take out student loans or something like that. Um, I will say we don't over reimburse. So I know some students get like a reimbursement check. Um, of mon like financial monies that they weren't able to use and it goes back to the student. Our admission scholarships don't work like that. They're just built to help cover the cost of tuition. Um, so let's say you, and I, I should say too, that it costs about 12,000 to go to NJCU for the year. Let's say you get $10,000 of finan like financial aid from federal or state agencies and then $2,000 more dollars from us, we wouldn't over reimburse past that 12,000. And then I think another question popped up, right? Nope, that's not for you, you're good. Not for me, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so application process. First things first, if you haven't already, you'll wanna submit your application online. Very important that we get that, that's the first step. Um, second thing is you're gonna send your official transcripts from all institutions attended. Again, I do mean all. So if you took a high school class at, like a, in your senior year of high school, if you took a class at Montclair, or if you took maybe a class at Essex, or you started um, or you have something with St. Peter's. We do need all of those transcripts. The other thing is they have to be official. That means that they come from whatever the school is directly to NJCU. So on the first slide, I had that admissions email. Make sure that the transcripts being sent electronically go there. I have uh, a question. Yeah, go ahead. 
Okay. Um, so I, I don't know, because I attended another community college. However, those um, credits were transferred to Hudson. So therefore, they have those credits and those credits are being applied to my associate's degree that I would be obtaining this um, the ending of this semester, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in that case, would that require transcripts from the previous? Yeah, excellent question. Yes, because the way it shows up on your Hudson transcript is it shows up as credit. We can't see the grades. Um, so in order gotcha. to see, we need the original transcript. Thank you. Yeah, excellent question, though. Thanks for asking that. And I see anything else in the chat for me? That's $12,000 for the year, correct? The year, right. Yeah, so I just answered that one. Yep, you're good. Thanks, Sabrina. Um, okay, the application fee and essay we can wait for you. Um, so again, I'll put my email in the chat. Just email me when it comes time to submit your application. Double check that it's going to be waived. Usually I do that when we're reviewing your transcript. So I wait until we get your official transcript and we can move ahead with everything. And I'll waive those requirements. Times are hard. I don't want to make any more work for anyone. Um, so that's that's why we're just kind of going ahead and waiving. For it. Um, after your admissions decision is input, or I should say after we get your transcript, we review you for admissions, we review you for a scholarship, and we send out your decision usually that same week. Um, unless it's a Friday, then it's going to go out on that Monday. Um, you're also going to get an email with your Gothic net login information. This is going to be important because this year we have an added extra step in enrollment that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, so you'll definitely want to make sure you take a note of that or like save that email screenshot at whatever you need. Admissions is on a rolling basis. We'll be admitting students all through the summer, but for scholarship purposes, we need everyone's applications in by May 1st. And I mean completed. So we have to have the transcripts. Your decision has to be input by, by May 1st. Um, it might feel like there's a lot of time, and there is, there's a good amount of time, but that day is going to sneak up on us real fast. So if you haven't submitted your application, do it today. You have the NJCU bug in you, the bug bit you today. We have this great presentation going on. You're learning a bunch about us. Um, after this, if you haven't done it yet, submit your, submit your application. Request your transcripts tomorrow. You'll always wind up, you'll wind up sending another one at the end of the semester so we can see that you graduated, so we can see your final grades. Um, but if we get things started now, it makes things easier later. That's the first part of the application process I wanna talk about. So that's basically getting to your acceptance letter. The next part I wanna talk about is on the right part of the screen, the enrollment process. Do we have any questions on the application first? Um, what if you're applying for spring of 2022? Good question. I would probably wait until fall then to submit it. What I'm talking about right now is, or what I kind of focus on is the coming semester. So all of this, these deadlines and stuff like that, we're talking about for the fall semester. For spring, I wouldn't probably worry about submitting your application until September. Even for the scholarships or whatever? Yeah, because the scholarship deadline for next semester will most likely be December 1. So John, we have a question. What's the fee for international students for nursing? I'm not sure which So the majors have. don't have different prices, but international students would pay out of state rates. Um, and they're still eligible for scholarships, which is important. Yes. Flavian, did you mean, what fee were you referring to? Is that the tuition? Did we get your question correct? Let's see. Oh, when is the next week? Flavian, if you can unmute yourself. Tuition. Tuition, okay. And then your second question is, when is your next take? Intake for nursing program for transfer nursing transfer so for nursing in particular or for there's no like on the undergraduate side we don't have like set deadlines for programs or anything like that so we're accepting nursing students now through the summer you'll basically have up until the day that classes start to register for your classes um don't wait it's a very bad idea to wait it's better to get your application and now so we can get things moving um but there's no deadline like programmatic Thank you. Right. So we have, um, who do they contact about the evaluation for their transfer credits? Um, the Transfer Resource Center, I think, is the email on the screen. TRC, no, I'll put their email in the chat too. Yes, okay. Um, but the Transfer Resource Center does your evaluation of your credits. So that basically outlines how all of your previous coursework is transferring to NJCU. Um, so if you have questions on the evaluation, I'd email them. Okay, then we have, I will be graduating this May, but I will still have two classes left. I will take one in summer one, 
and the other in summer too. And when mm -hmm. I finish, I will get my degree. Can I still apply as a transfer student now or do I yeah. need to wait until I get my degree? Yeah, now I would, for anyone planning on applying or for enrolling in the fall, apply now, get your transcripts in now and we'll update as we have them. Um, again, it's better to, for in terms of the scholarship deadline, I want you all to get the scholarship dollars. I want you to get the scholarship funding. So get the applications in now, get the transcripts in now for fall. Um, if we have to update things later, we definitely can. But the I guess in this regard, the name of the game is now. <laughs> And the last thing we have here, which thank you, Jennifer, she responded for us, uh, was about book vouchers. Do you get book vouchers? And Jennifer, we do offer book vouchers. I'll be honest, I don't know a ton about the process. So if we want, I can research that and share it with Ms. Tejal or uh, Guadal yeah. uh, Guadalupe. I can actually help with that one. So oh, cool. um, the way they do it now, and Jennifer, um, you can uh, attest to this as well. It's basically the the money that you have for your aid, similar to Hudson, if you have anything extra, you're pretty much getting an advance. And they put it on your Gothic card, which is your student ID. And then you can use that to buy books in the bookstore. And then the rest will come to you as a refund check later on the semester once they verify your attendance and disperse your aid. Cool, thanks, Sabrina. No problem. All right, I think that's all your questions for now. Okay. Oh, let me go back. So the next thing I want to talk about is the enrollment process. So this is the kind of the follow up. So after you've been admitted and you get your scholarship letter, you're going to get that email we were talking about from the Transfer Resource Center. It'll outline how all of your previous coursework is going to transfer. This is the next step that I was talking about that's a little bit new. We're asking students to accept their offer of admission through GothicNet and pay a $50 commitment deposit. The commitment deposit goes back to your tuition. And I always feel like I have to explain that just because I hate that we have students paying a commitment deposit right now, just because it's an extra step. Um, but it goes back to your tuition. It's not like disappearing into NJCU. Um, it's money that goes right back to your tuition bill. So that's kind of nice to know. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that step by step in a second. Um, registration for new students for the fall is going to start on March 29th. So that's around the corner. So if you're planning on starting in the fall, that's why I keep kind of stressing, let's get things done sooner rather than later, because you can be in that first cohort of students to be advised. And I want you to be in that first cohort of students. So you'll have the first pick of classes. Everything's done pretty early. You can kind of casually enjoy your summer and leisurely prepare for the coming fall. Um, like I said, we're going to be admitting students all through the summer up until the first day of classes. Um, don't wait. It's better to get everything taken care of now. Um, I really, again, I really stress the now of it all because I, it's an excellent point. You have a very dedicated team on the Hudson side. You have a very dedicated team on the NJCU side. Um, so there's no reason that we can't get your applications in now and make everything a nice leisurely process. Um, one thing that's nice too is I don't want anyone to feel like they have to have all this memorized. That is not your job. Your job is not to basically like store this all in your brain. We have resources on our website as well to help you to kind of help along the process. And I'll be sure to post them in the chat before we head out today. Um, there is an admitted students checklist. It walks you through everything. Like I said, we have the transfer admitted students day, which is kind of like a vocal reminder where it's a presentation similar to this. And we talk through all the information. Um, again, it's not your job to completely memorize all this. It's just your job to ask the questions and check in and say, okay, what's my next step? And to read the email and to kind of stay on top of it. What I wanted to go through next is we're just going to talk through securing your spot. That first thing we talked about Gothic Net, right? You'll be sent Gothic Net. You'll want to take a quick note of it. You sign in from our website. You just go to njcu.edu. There's a little button there that says Gothic Net, and you sign in with your user ID and password. And this stuff is mailed to you. So you'll, or I'm sorry, emailed to you. So you'll just take a quick note of that. After you sign into Gothic Net, there's going to be a little tile that says admissions. You're going to give a clicky click on that. And then you accept your offer of admission. From there, it asks you to pay that $50 commitment deposit online. Again, it goes right back to you. So if you, it, when you put that $50 deposit in, it means that you're ready to commit to NJCU. You're ready to meet with advising. That's kind of that threshold between when you're admitted and meet, uh, meeting with advising to pick your classes. And then once that's done, then you're able to meet with advising. So they'll reach out to you and let you know who your advisor is. They'll help you set up an appointment to pick classes for the coming semester. And again, registration starts on March 29th. So there's still plenty of time to get in for fall. I know that we, we probably want to talk a little bit about the nursing program too. But before we get there, I just want to see any other questions or anything. I think we might. Um, I do have a question. On the chat. Go ahead, Aisha. Sorry. 
Um, yes, I saw that I was um, given admission. So I went in the website and I click um, accept admission. However, I haven't paid because I thought I saw something that if you're an EOF scholar, uh, I think it's a waiver. I'm not sure, maybe I didn't see it right, but I, I didn't pay that because I saw that it says EOF um, student, you, you get a waiver or something. But in that case, I have to go back and pay that $50. I'm pretty sure, Sabrina, do you know if EOF is being so waived? So that's something deposit? we can definitely look into. Uh, we'll speak to the director of admissions because the way it's set up right now, um, it's automatically waived for our incoming new freshmen. Uh, but because you apply to the university first and then EOF, it's not set up for transfers. But we can look into it to see if that's something that can be considered. Yeah, and we'll follow up with Ms. Tehal on that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I have another question. I'm sorry. Um, I I transfer my uh, my I mean my credit over with the electronic. However, I have 14 credit now. So and I also have my scholarship. They already gave me the letter for everything. So if I'm finished with the 14 credit this semester, do I do the same with the the transfer the electronic or how do I get it over to you? So if you have an updated transcript, you send it after the grades are posted. Like, how do I send it over? Like the electronic, the same way I transfer my transcripts? Oh. Yeah. So if you have like grades that are in progress right now, you basically request a new transcript once the grades have been posted. So like once there are grades showing up on the transcript, you request it the same way that you requested the initial transcript. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question in regards to um, EOF, as far as that, that goes, like, is there a deadline for EOF to be admitted into EOF uh, for the fall uh, semester? Yes, we're going to get into that shortly. Uh, okay, so then I'll stand by. Question, no, I'll still answer it, though. The question is, um, so Lenora, September, August 15th for fall, help me out here, Lenora, and it's January 15th for spring. Correct, correct. Hold on a second, we have, so Jasmine, we'll get into the EOF slide, but before we do that, I just want to give Mr. John an opportunity to answer the rest of the questions. So, Lewis has a good question here. Is there a GPA requirement for certain majors? If so, what would it be for an accounting major? He's concerned about his 2-9 delaying him because a lot of schools say that he needs to wait until he has a 3-0. Good question. No. So when we're admitting students to the university, we're not looking for specific, uh, we're not looking for specific GPA majors. I'm sorry. We're not looking for specific major GPAs or specific coursework necessarily. We're looking for a cumulative GPA of a 2. Um, so what will happen is in terms of like your degree progress, there if there are classes that need to be made up, um, because of like a low, like a low grade or something like that, you would have to make those up. Um, but I kind of think of when you come to NJC with your associates, it's a clean slate. So your GPA from Hudson doesn't factor in You're starting. I don't like to say you're starting from zero because that puts you lower than it would actually be. Um, but you're starting fresh. So you have a brand new GPA with NJCU. Um, let's say you didn't do great in those accounting classes and you do have classes that you need to make up or something like that. Of course, that would need to be satisfied. Um, but otherwise, you don't need like a specific GPA to be admitted to certain majors. You just have to have our general, like overall 2.0. And yeah, the education major is probably the only one to be a little concerned because if you're really far off to the minimum GPA for education, then they might, you know, might slow you down. So that would be the only major that I would say, just keep that in mind. Even though you may be admitted, it will slow you down. Yeah. All right, Camila says, how can I apply for scholarships? Any GPA requirement for psychology? You just answered that. Uh, if you answered that, all right. Uh, Charles, did we answer your, you have to apply for EOF once they grant admission. Yes, Charles. And uh, Sin, what would be the deadline to accept the offer of admission? Good question. So again, it's going all through the summer, um, but sooner is rather than later or it's better to do everything sooner rather than later. Cause we, again, we're gonna be admitting students all through the summer. Um, we're gonna be registering students all through the summer as well. Students technically have until the first day of classes to register. Um, again, don't wait. If, if you have an interest in NJCU now and you wanna kind of get things moving, um, again, that scholarship deadline is May 1st. So that's something that we definitely wanna keep in mind too. 
Um, so in terms of scholarship, I'd say May 1 is the deadline that you have to take care of that. Um, but overall, we have all through the summer for those decisions. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is nursing because I, I have know a that. question. Yeah, what's up? Um, I was a student at HSU when I was a freshman. So I was there for the fall semester. And then I transferred over to HCC. Mm -hmm. And now I'm all, um, I have two classes left for, uh, from Hudson. And I mm -hmm. want to transfer back to HCU. Mm -hmm. So do I have to have an associate degree? Or I have to wait like to take those classes during the summer and then I can come back to NGCU. So I don't know what's the process, you know? Yeah, so that's a good question. So Mina, in particularly for you, you would be considered a readmission student. So you would be being readmitted to NJCU. Um, so there's, it's not a super different application process, but we just review you in a different way. Um, and there's a counselor, I'll just put it in the readmission. So um, uh, this is the second part. Uh, the second part of the question I was looking to, uh, like, to schedule an appointment with my counselor, but uh, somehow like I can't uh, remember her name. So I was looking like to 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 sit with her and like to see like if my all my credits gonna be transferred over, or like there will be some glitch, like a mistake in here or here. So remember too, you won't be able to meet with advising until we have your updated transcripts and until we have your, um, until you have your updated, we have your updated transcript and we have your um, acceptance input and stuff like that. So if you haven't been accepted yet, that might be one of the reasons why. Um, what we can do is, I'll, again, I'll put my email in the chat. So if you have questions, just email me directly so we can kind of get further into the nitty gritty. Um, but there was a second part to Mina's question I wanted to go into too. And I think we kind of talked about this in the beginning. Um, you can transfer to NJCU at any point. You can transfer after taking a couple classes at Hudson. You can transfer after like a couple semesters at Hudson. I really recommend waiting to get your associate's degree. Um, the reason I recommend that is one, we were talking about this in the beginning. There's a law in New Jersey called the Lampet Law that protects all the credits you get from a community college when you have your associates. Um, so when you come into NJCU with your associates, you're starting as a junior. You're focusing on, I call it the meat and potatoes of your content. So you're focused on what your major is specifically. You don't have gen eds to retake or anything like that. Um, you can transfer it at any point, but it's a better benefit for you as the student to make sure that you get your associates first. Um, just because it makes the process a little bit easier. It makes it a little bit shorter. You have a, again, you have a great team at Hudson. There's a great team waiting for you at NJCU. So I strongly recommend getting your associates first. You can do it at any point, but I, in my opinion, the smart thing is to do is wait, get your associates, and then transfer. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about quickly before transitioning over to uh, transitioning over to EOF and OSP, um, the nursing program, because I know there's a lot of interest in our nursing program at NJCU. You have to be enrolled in the RN program at Hudson. So we can't admit students who maybe had like a health or a bio major. You have to be enrolled in the RN program. So what we do is we look to see what semester you're in when you apply as long as you have that nursing four course in progress, we're able to grant admission. So we have to see that it's like that upcoming semester. Um, the way it works is our nursing program is very, they're, I don't mean hands-on in a negative way. They're a very hands-on program um, and you'll always know what you're doing with them. They're very, they're very involved with their students and they make sure that you're very prepared for what's going on. So when you meet with them to pick your classes and stuff like that, they, they basically give you like a menu and they basically can outline like, okay, all of your classes are going to be structured into a Wednesday. So if you're working in a hospital or a doctor's office, you only have to request one day off with them. They're working with you to help prepare for your NCLEX. To get into our nursing program, you don't have to have passed your NCLEX already. Um, you can do it in the first semester, but they do strongly recommend working towards that near your last semester of Hudson. Um, and they're great. They're a vet, like I said, they're a very hands-on faculty. You'll work with Dr. Wright and Jackie Mattiello. Um, they are wonderful, wonderful instructors and administrators. So for any of my nursing students coming down the pike, you are in excellent hands with them. Any other questions for me before I turn over to OSP? Um, hello, um, I'm Abram and I'm a first year student. So I have, have, have a question. So um, since I'm a first year, is it better if I can actually wait it out until I, until I actually get my associate's degree? I would recommend doing that. Just because you're already started at Hudson, you're established there, 
you're building your GPA and your credits and stuff like that, I'd always recommend getting your associates first. Okay, so I have a question um, about like registration. Mm -hmm. um, just like I said, I, I received the admission letter. So um, I would like to like um, schedule an appointment just to go over like, um, like what class to register and if possible for like somebody to assist me to register at least the first class to know what I'm doing, like to get familiar with things. Um, I don't know if that's possible and what, um, like who do I speak to? Like, is there an email to email somebody or? Yeah, so that kind of goes back to the registration part, right? So after you get your credit evaluation, you get linked with an advisor and the advisor helps you pick your classes for the coming semester. So if you've been admitted already, you would have to accept that offer of admissions like we talked about, um, pay that commitment deposit, and then you get linked with an advisor to sit with them and pick your classes for the coming semester. Um, and it, uh, and like, did you get your credit evaluation already? Like the Transfer Resource Center sent um, Yes, I got my credit evaluation, everything. I have my um, yeah. admission letter. I have, and I accepted the admission. The only thing I haven't done yeah. is the $50 payment. But since um, you explained more, I'll do that today. But um, probably after I do that, they will email me my advisor or something like contact yeah, me. It's still it's still a little early in the month because like I said, advising starts at the end of it. Um, okay. You should probably be receiving updates on it soon. We send messaging out uh, to your NJCU email. So you want to make sure that you have access to that, but it should be starting before the month is over. So the NJCU email is this is in the same website that I um, accept the admission letter? Yeah, so it's usually what you use to log into GothicNet, like it would usually be your first initial and your last name. Um, that's what your email would wind up being. And then usually the number one. If you need to check on it, again, I'll put my email in the chat. You can always email me and we'll figure that out. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, so I want to leave time for OSP and EOF. So let me introduce my wonderful colleagues from that program. I don't know who's going to be starting. Um, but again, we have Sabrina Medjulo here. We have uh, Lloyda Goldson here. Again, the name of the day is we we are here to support you. So let's switch over to talking a little bit more um, you, about our John. wonderful EOF and OSP. Program. There are a few other questions. If you can just respond to them in the chat while we oh, get yeah, started sure, over sure. here. All right. So welcome everyone. Uh, so we're going over this. We're focusing on a lot of the EOF, but I do see we have some non-EOF scholars here as well. So definitely just keep in mind that that option is available to you. So what I wanted to start with saying is that EOF is called the Opportunity Scholarship Program at NJCU. So that's something to just keep in mind. If you see our logo in the top left corner, uh, one of our students created it. It's the same program, right? So different name, but the same family. So we always say EOF is an extension of family. This is your extended family, okay? I uh, just wanted to give you guys an idea. Right now we have about 425 scholars in our program and about 6% of them are EOF transfers. And another thing to look forward to being a part of is our graduation rate, right? So we want to make sure that you complete your from start to end in six years. And our rate is 70%. So that goes to show you that you're going to be in good hands. We're going to take care of you. Okay, if you can go to the next slide, please. All right, so I put this one on here because again, remembering back and I think to say before for so, some of you who are non-EOF that I did work at CAS as well. I oversaw that. So many of you know CAS from going and doing your registration over at Hudson. Um, so between both experiences, I remember when I would have scholars from Hudson that would go over to NJCU and they would come back and visit and, ask, and I would ask how it was. I would always just hear it's different. You know, I don't like it, you know, in the beginning. And it made me wonder, like, what is going on over there? And now I'm over there, here, right? And I realized that that's not, it's just that it was different, right? And different can be scary. So the scholars who really did embrace that change and continue to do so, they're the ones who end up realizing, you know what? It's not that I'm letting go of my EOF family at Hudson, it's that I'm extending my EOF family. So now I have two EOF families. So I just want you to keep that in mind. And one of the conversations that I remember having in particular with one of our graduates was that she described NJCU as feeling like a small fish in a big pond. Anyone ever hear of that saying before? Put your little light it up if you did. I can't really see, but I'll assume somebody said something. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
And then what I, I challenged the student to think about was maybe you were always just a big fish in a small pond, right? So when you think about the size of the campus, right? When you're at Hudson, it seems like, okay, it's a few buildings, they're next door across the street, maybe you go down the block and then you come here and it's like, oh my gosh, this is so big. And when you look at the numbers of students, it's very similar. Uh, so I just want you all to think about that as you embark on this uh, transition. Next slide, please. Okay, because again, sometimes you're just afraid of what's different, but it doesn't mean it's bad. Different can be good, just embrace it. All right, so another part of that in, in trying to um, let you know that you will be in good hands. We have some of the team members on here. Just wanted to throw some numbers out here for you, right? As far as who are these people? Who are these strangers? Like I said before, stranger danger, right? Um, so we'll, we'll have the Miss Rosie, right? We can't replace Miss Rosie, but we have Miss Lenora, who is great as well. Uh, so there's 12 of us on the team who are professional staff. So that's the director, the associate director, our assistants, counselors. Uh, we have a tutorial coordinator. We have a program assistant who takes care of your grants. And then we have several of our uh, tutors, mentors. So just to give you an idea where, yes, it's a larger program than Hudson, but we have more staff. So you'll still receive that individualized attention where we know your name, we know your story, and we're here for you. Okay, and then again, we have members who've worked at the community college license. So just give me a quick snapshot of who we are. The main thing that I want you to take away is that last bullet that everyone is committed to our program and its scholars. Okay. So financial aid, I know we had a few questions about this. So as you're transitioning into the four year college or universities, your grant increases to be aligned with the EOF grants, um, to be aligned with tuition that increases at the four-year school versus the community college. Okay, so if you are a commuter student, then you're looking at 100 to $675 per semester. If you're living on campus, we had some questions about that. Um, again, your grant goes up, but remember your tuition costs increase. So that's a personal decision you want to make. You want to make that decision with your family. We know a lot of students who will say, you know, I really want that experience of being away at college, living on campus, but you really have to think about that investment. If you live closely and you have a safe environment where you can be at home, then think about the long-term impact of staying on campus because you're gonna have to probably take out loans, okay? Um, whereas some people have different situations where just know that, you know, home is not a place where I'm going to be able to be successful. So then they have to make that sacrifice and know that that's going to be that investment. But again, really have that so you can make a, a informed decision before getting yourself into debt. Uh, one of the things that I am happy to see and we continue to try to make that higher is about 65% of our scholars are able to cover the cost of education without any debt. And when I say cost of education, it's not just tuition and fees, it's their books, their transportation. But again, if you're living on campus, then you are looking at having some loans to cover that, okay? Another important thing with financial aid is making sure you are completing the FAFSA um, as soon as possible. When you do that, if you are completing the FAFSA, make sure the NJCU is listed as one of the top three schools because that's the only way we'll be able to access your information. Sometimes students say, but I put NJCU on there. We're like, but you're not coming up in the system and it's because we're at the bottom maybe. Um, so definitely make sure if you definitely know you're coming, put us as number one. Um, we also have the New Jersey Alternative Financial Aid application and that is for our DACA students. So New Jersey, allows DACA students to be able to be eligible for state aid. Okay, so while you may not be eligible for federal aid, you would be able to get your tuition aid grant and possibly EOF if you um, are cleared for both. Okay, so you're doing one or the other depending on your circumstances right now. Uh, the last thing I want you all, this is important for all of you, whether you're EOF or not, Really work with your counselors, and I'm sure you're doing this, but think ahead as far as your number of eligible semesters for funding, okay? So non-EOF students, you have eight semesters of state funding, okay? And that is for your whole time. It's not just you get eight semesters at the community college and then you get another eight at the four-year. It's eight in total, right? So 
the advantage to being an EOF is that that turns into 12 eligible state uh, for state aid, 12 semesters, okay? So you want to plan in advance because we've seen some students who will get close to maxing out their aid at the community college and then they get here and they have aid, state aid for maybe a year and then don't have anything, okay? Everybody's journey is different and we wanna work with you, but we want you to plan ahead because if you know you're gonna max out of aid after your junior year, then you can start building other plans to finance your senior year, whether that's working on boosting your GPA up and finding out about all the scholarships that you can possibly apply for, uh, whether it's starting to put some money away for savings for that. We just want you to make sure that you're planning ahead and we will do that with you, okay? I have so a question. Please, yes. Okay, so you said that, um, so the state, you referring to HESA, right? Yes. He said, okay, so they give you a certain amount of funding. I'm having an issue with them now in regards to the allowed maximum amount for a community college. So basically they have withdrawn um, that, that I exceeded the amount. Typically they only give you five, mm -hmm. um, but for a community college, however, I think I got an eight. Um, so because they did that at this point, when I transfer over to, um, obviously to NJCU, um, will I still be applicable for another amount? Is that because I feel like. If you've had eight semesters of aid, state aid, then you'll have another four semesters. Okay. Because mm -hmm. it'll go up to 12, as long as you are in EOF. So we want to make sure that you do get connected. Uh, are you currently an EOF student or non-EOF? Yes, I am. Okay. I, I'm yeah. having an issue with, uh, he's, I call them. Um, however, they, they said that I, because I'm at the community college, I already exceeded that. However, I guess they will give me more once I go to. Yeah, so you probably maxed out the community college. Yep. So there's, there's the max at each level, but then overall it's the 12 semesters. But it's good that you are aware of this, and that's for everyone on this. You know, make sure you know what HESA is, what MJ Fans is, um, and I know your counselors are working with you on that. It doesn't change when you come to NJCU, right? Because HESA is in charge of state aid for the whole state of New Jersey. All right, let's go to the next. Oh, another thing too. Another thing that we would do to work with you to try to help you complete your degree within your aid is plan to take summer or winter courses, okay? So we've been very fortunate to get funding from the state and that's why your counselors probably push you all the time to participate in the EOF day at the Capitol because that is why it's so important. We get that money. So we have some of our scholars who know they're going to max out at a certain point. So they're very strategic and working on planning out their courses and saying, you know what, I'm gonna do four, five classes this semester, I'm going to do one summer one, one summer two, and use my PEL and then get EOF, and then I'm going to do a winter. So that way they can get the extra funding in those summer and winter and then complete their degree within their funds. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so we are running low on time. We have four minutes, right? Okay, we'll go fast. So these are just some initiatives I wanted to, you to be aware of at OSP. So 30 to thrive, you may have heard of 15 to finish, but we know that students, our scholars are juggling a lot in their lives. And sometimes 15 credits a semester is too much if you're working full time, taking care of children, loved ones. So we've shifted, shifted that into 30 per year. So we may have some scholars who'll do 12, three, three, 12, right? So kind of how I said before, customizing your plan to completion. Um, I mentioned the winter and summer. We also do a practice enrichment for our education majors, leadership activities, how you have your workshops. We have that here as well, two per semester. We also have expanded on that for leadership development opportunities. If you're on Instagram, you can follow us on there and you'll see we have two of our counselors working with scholars to put on an OSP podcast. We have a hip hop support group. And we recently had a career uh, author of a career manual starting out with us yesterday. Next slide. Okay, so again, just I want you to all keep in mind, you know, when you're going into change, I love quotes. So I put this, it's, you know, let go of fighting the old. Um, I remember having the opportunity to study abroad and I was an EOF student as an undergrad as well. And that's another opportunity if you were to come to NJC once COVID is done, right? 
And I remember the best piece of advice they said is if you go in to this new space, always comparing it to the old space, you're robbing yourself of this new opportunity. Okay, so open yourself up to the new opportunity. And these are some scholars who have come here from, you see some Hudson people in here. Uh, next one. We're going, Lenora. Got two minutes. All right, so these are some alum. So some of your team recognizes some of them who they started out at Hudson and they just finished with us last uh, spring. So I'm just gonna turn it over to Jennifer real quick before I get into the application in our two minutes. How did this happen? To um, but that's great because you guys all had very good questions. So Jennifer, if you could just say a little something about your experience at NJCU as an OSB scholar. Hi. <laughs> Um, so I just want to briefly just talk about how I got, I just want to briefly talk about where I was before I came here. So as soon as I graduated from Hudson County Community College back in May 2019, a month later, I found out I was pregnant. So when I found out I was pregnant, I decided, you know what, let me just take a break. So after a year of boys, I realized that, especially with this whole coronavirus, it's still a lot more pressure to come back at the year, at the whole year. So um, thankfully, I had an experience conversation with John who helped me transfer my uh, uh, my transfer from Hudson to NDCU. Um, I waited my application to you and stuff like that, and then it was a very really smooth. I I was able to enjoy the rest of the summer. Like I had that out of the way, I started right away in the fall of 2020. Um, and at the same time, that with all this responsibility, I realized that I do need guidance. So when I found out about the ELS program in NGCU, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna apply for that too. So when I applied for that, I'm like, yes, I got a personal counsel who meeting me weekly, um, who we have a conversation every week about my goals, about what I want to do, how I'm going to graduate, how many classes do I need to take. And thankfully, I'm completing all my registration all the way to spring 2022, where I'll be graduating, hopefully with a 4.0 uh, GPA. I have a 3.8 now. So being an OSP student and doing all the leadership training, and I just finished, um, the student leadership conference recently, all of that just got me going and I'm ready to graduate and take over the world. <laughs> and she definitely will. She is definitely one of our scholars who you see her at everything, just absorbing the knowledge and taking it all in. And that's what we want everyone to do, maximize on all the opportunities that are available to you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. We know you're busy, so we appreciate you taking time out today. Uh, next slide. All right, so Lenora, this is what we were going to. So Miss Lenora is the one who will be your point of contact. So as far as once you're accepted to NJCU, you will go to our website and we can put this in the chat. Um, Ms. Lenora, if you can just put the website in the chat, please. Thank you, or Dawn, thank you. All right, so once you get accepted to NJCU, you're gonna go onto our website. This is a screenshot of what the website looks like. You're going to click, for those of you who are currently EOF, scholars, you'll click on the EOF transfer component. You'll see the application there. Then there's another part that says non EOF transfer. It's the same application. They're just in different sections of the um, website to differentiate the, the categories. But when you go into your application, you will have the opportunity to click on which is yours. So again, if you have had the EOF grant, you will click EOF transfer. If you have not had it previously, you would just put non EOF transfer. Okay. And currently, I can tell you that we have enough space to fill both. Uh, for a long time, the priority for funding is where the non EOF transfer is at the bottom. And because the programs were overly enrolled, oh, enrolled high, high enrollments, I'm sorry, uh, we never got to those scholars, but we definitely have that space now. Uh, we're graduating our students quicker, so we have that space, okay? Let's go ahead, next slide. Oh, and then, so with that, Lenora, where, if you want to uh, 
just kind of let them know. Ms. Lenore, I can't see when I'm doing this. Okay, I'm here, Sabrina. Hey, okay. So, so when you get when you put that application, and Miss Lenora is the person who gets it. Okay, mm -hmm. so she looks at it, and then she will contact you. So I'm gonna just see if she wants to share a few words about what goes on then. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, scholars, um, once you fill out that application, um, please do fill it out um, very thoroughly, and, and try to answer all the um, questions that do apply to you and that makes the transition a little easier so that you know things won't like I got to contact you and say okay I need you to get this this and that I know at Hudson um, Rosie does you, and it you we do, do get a transfer application from Hudson also but this we need for you to have filled out this one also because this is for our tracking benefits as well so sometimes you may say, well, I did send it from Hudson. It was already sent. That's, that's fine. But we will also need for you to fill out that um, transfer application also um, through our website. And once you fill all of that out, I will be notified. And, and once you do click send, you will get a notification saying that we are in receipt of your um, application. And it takes somewhere between two, two to three weeks. And we will get back to you where we will um, assign a, a counselor to you. And if I need any other information from you, I will contact you and let you know what I do need from you. And then we'll just take it from there. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I tried to apply, right? But however, I'm, I just started UF this semester, so I guess I'm not really, um, I haven't really discovered a lot of things about it because they were asking me questions that I wasn't sure. So I just left the application. So I want to know, like, when is the, I'm starting in the fall. I want to know when is the best time for me to, like, the deadline for me to apply for, for the, for the UF, for fall semester, like if I'm starting in the fall because I was waiting for the semester, this semester to finish so that I may probably I will have um, all the knowledge, they, like the answers to the question they asked me in the application. Yeah, I mean, we um, opened Serena the application. And Nora, before you both uh, respond, I just wanted to yeah. chime in really quick. Uh -huh. um, so Aisha, um, she's my scholar. So she's just recently coming into the semester as oh, she's okay. graduating this semester, we picked her up. So mm -hmm. with that being said, Aisha, as you're coming into the program, I know it's still new for you. And that's why in our monthly, twice a month meetings, we're gonna continue to talk about the benefits. And as you see, this is one of the benefits. You get to have your own transfer session as EOF scholars. So that's something that's not always provided in our schools, right? Uh, so that's something important. Now, when it comes to transfer form scholars, um, as you know, going forward, it's been Mr. Knight, myself, or Mr. Lowe. For those who are graduating this semester, you should have received an email. There's a capstone project that you must complete instead of doing workshops. You are to complete that project with Ms. Maria Tejada. And then we will then release a transfer form for your next school. So how it works now is that um, Lenora and Sabrina, it's either my, uh, the counselor who fill out that form uh, and because we have a new transfer process uh, from the EOF state central office as well we're following that form going forward and then we send it over via DocuSign so that's the process at this point in time so Aisha as you know and scholars those who are graduating this semester is to complete that capstone project with Miss Maria and then we will then release that transfer form and then um, Lenora and Sabrina if you want to answer Aisha's uh, question in regards to this fall and what to expect <laughs> Yes, I started the capstone too. I'm doing it. It's uh, it's just a uh, um, it's it's quite a long um list, so I'm I'm on it. <laughs> no, I know you are, Aisha. Don't worry about it. But it's just for the rest of the scholars and for OSP staff to know. We're making sure that we find new and innovative and uh, innovative ways to really encourage them instead of workshops. We're doing this capstone project, which is really great. So that yes. way we can keep them on point and we get them transferred. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's similar to that uh development that we talked about with students um, creating it on their own. But thank you for that, uh, Ms. Tahab, because I was going so quickly through the slides, realizing that some of you probably have to leave because you all had so many great questions. We had like 10 minutes, but um, the transformation form is the first part on that slide that I did not say, but it was on there. So you'll get that form signed first and then uh, apply to our program. And the deadline, uh, like I said earlier, for fall admission, it's August 15th. 
-hmm. And for spring admission, January 15th. January 15th. Well, when you look on the application, it's going to say the second Friday. Yes. That's what so, I was confusing myself. Yeah. That's graduate. So second yes. Friday. Thank you, Lenora. Mm -hmm. So second Friday of January, second Friday of August. Any questions? We left that last slide so you have everyone's information. We thank you all so much. It was great to feel your energy. One day we'll be able to meet in person. But Thank you so much, Marina. Were you able to touch upon DACA and undocumented scholars as well? You did, okay, great, because I had to step away. Awesome, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, scholars, is there any other question for NGCU's admission or NGCUSP staff? This is the time to ask. This is the important time. So any other questions? Um. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I have a question. Um, okay, so Abraham and then Eva. Excellent. Okay. okay. Um, this is this is actually uh, the same the same thing, but um, I'm I'm a uh, math major, so um, after let's say two, let's say after after the second year, I can come back again, and actually ask a, answer the the questions, but actually more extended. So Abraham, your question one more time. So you're asking exactly? Yeah, there's the same thing, but it's a different, it's a different, it's a different wording. So after, let's say, I'm a first year student in the second semester. So after second year, maybe prior to that, prior to second semester, second year, um, I'm going to come back and actually, and actually try to get some more questions. So since I'm a math major. <laughs> You're telling us to prepare for you, right, Abraham? Yeah, it kind of All prepared right. me. <laughs> we'll Excellent. be ready to see you, but that's a great idea because you'll know more about what you want by then and you'll have more questions. Agreed. Abraham is ready. Abraham is always ready, right, Abraham? <laughs> awesome. Excellent. I'm so proud of him. Thank you so much. Eva, go ahead. You had a question. Yes, I want to know once I'm done with the meeting, where is it that I go right now to register? Do I have to do it to the EOF with you guys or I could just go online now and do my application for NJCU? That's a great question, Eva. First and foremost, I would definitely give an alert to Mr. Knight that you're planning on registering and applying to NJCU. So as John mentioned, if this is the decision right now and as you're gonna be transferring, graduating this upcoming semester, so to go ahead and do that before March 29th, because that's the deadline. So just get on that ASAP, have a conversation with Mr. Knight because your capstone project, and then that way we can then release a transfer form to both to John and to Ms. Sabrina, Ms. Lenora over there at NGCU. So that would be the next steps for you to go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm going to do that because my appointment is for 4 30. I thought it was 3 30, but it's 4 30 with him okay. today. Okay, excellent. Okay, great. All right, Thank so you. um, one more.